Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for the very first solo live event of 2024, episode one of three. And I am so excited to share with you all of the awesome features we're going to be revealing over these next three episodes. If we haven't met before, my name's Sam Fitton and I'm the inventor of Solo and Solo Studio Pro. Now, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this. I realize it's quite a lot of investment to sit down, to get all the video and to watch the stream. So whether you're watching this live or on catch up, I really do appreciate it. And the reason for doing three of these is so that we could make each episode that little bit shorter, easily digestible, and obviously much easier to watch on catch up as well. So I really hope you enjoy what we're doing with this and obviously the features that we'll be revealing as well. Um, so I've got my PowerPoint ready, as you can see, uh, and we're just going to dive straight in. But before we start revealing features, I really wanted to talk to you about the system itself. Because Solo, as I'm sure if you're a user of Solo will know, it's unlike anything else out there. You can do things that were not even possible over a year ago. Just by picking up objects and props in your show, you can cue specific moments in your show. Uh, and that has literally changed the game for so many people. And, and certainly it has for me. So I'm super excited to show you these next few things. Um, but the app itself. Now you'll have noticed if you've downloaded Solo Studio that currently there are two versions. There's Solo Studio Basic and Solo Studio Pro. And they exist as two different apps on the App Store. Well, that will be a thing of the past because we're merging them. They're going to become one mega app, um, Solo Studio Pro, which will take the lead. And basically, the reason why we're doing that is we're going to be making Solo Studio Pro free to download for the basic version. And then in the app, you'll be able to upgrade. So why are we doing this in effect? Well, to be honest, it just brings it all together and makes it much easier for us to manage in the office and at the back end, having one app on the App Store rather than loads. And obviously it's easier for people to find as well. So when you dive onto the App Store, you're only looking for one app rather than which one of these two. And then as I mentioned, you can upgrade in the app. It's logical, it's simple, it's what everyone's doing these days. It makes it far easier for customers and much more logical. So that's what we're doing with the app itself on the App Store. And I just also wanted to touch on what we managed to achieve in 2023. Because believe it or not, in 2023, we made so many changes to Solo Studio uh, and Solo Studio Pro. And if I think back to this time last year when we were getting ready to launch, there were some features which I now see as being absolutely vital that didn't exist. So for example, multiple shows, the delete tag tool, groups, groups, uh, group go mode, multi-file import, uh, play bar seeking, the import and export shows function, URL queues for Jonathan Levitt's Stranger, if you've not used that, go mode enhancements um, to make it more logical, the advanced track trim, so you can go down to a hundredth of a second just using your finger, um, level shift feedback that changes depending on whether you're going up or down in volume, group reset button inside a group, as before you had to close the app and restart, well now we've got that reset button, and tile icons, so you can easily see you know, the difference between groups and audio cues, and then of course, there was increased delay time to allow you to add more complex special effects and layering within your cues. So that's all that we managed to, you know, that's what we managed to achieve just in 2023. And bearing in mind that we launched in the late February. So in little, and we, and we didn't push another update out until October. So that all of these updates got pushed out in six months realistically. So I hope this shows the huge amount of work and investment that we're putting in behind the scenes to make this better. And most of these features, by the way, were, well, they were suggested by you. They were suggested by users of Solo who went, hang on a minute, this would be amazing, this would be amazing, this would be cool. And thanks to the feedback mechanism that we've got in place via Solo Labs, so it's solosfx.com forward slash labs, where you can submit a feature request, we listen to you. And no more has that been so than in these next updates. Now, this is where we really get into the meat and bones of this. Because the first feature that we will be releasing in 2024 is HDMI output. Now this is critical 
for the rest of what I'm about to reveal, and I'm sure you can guess why. But HDMI output has been a difficult thing to get right for a number of different reasons, but I'm so pleased that we've now managed to crack it and it works unbelievably well. But why did we decide to go with HDMI? Well, do you remember that survey I sent out? Well, these were the results. When I asked what you are most likely to use in order to stream content from your uh, iPad or iPhone to a TV or projector, 70% of you said HDMI. About 11% of you said um, Apple AirPlay, and the same roughly 11% said Google Cast or Chromecast, and then somebody said other. Um, I don't know who that was, <laughs> but, but I don't know how you're sending your data, but let us know. Um, so yeah, so as you can see, a bit, an even split between AirPlay and Google Cast, but overwhelmingly HDMI seems to be the most uh, important thing. Um, which was a bit of a surprise, to be honest. I thought mo more people would want wireless, but it turns out we all trust the solid HDMI cable in our hand. So that's why I've implemented it. But this was the thing that really tipped me over the edge with deciding how to do this. And it was, what would you be likely to trust? And as you can see, Google Cast completely vanished, which was a shame because we'd put so much work into getting that right. Um, but... HDMI clearly is what you're all going to use and what you trust. So why wouldn't we listen to you? So that's why we're bringing in HDMI. As you can see, Apple AirPlay sits at about the same, about 11%, while HDMI rocketed to about 88 to 89%. So as you can see, overwhelmingly, our users prefer and would trust a HDMI cable to output their shows from their iPad and iPhone to the projector or TV screen. So that's why we're implementing it. But what does it realistically look like in the app? Well, you're gonna to head to the tools section. Um, we added the tools section um, as part of an update last year, which included the delete tag function and import and export. Well, now there's another little extra box in there and it is HDMI output. And when you click enable on that HDMI output, you will see a drop down of different output resolutions, all the way from 720p all the way up to 8K to kind of future proof this. Now, the reason why you get to select this is because different outputs we've realized have different capabilities when talking to an iPad or an iPhone, certainly the newer ones. So this means that you get to tailor exactly how it looks on the display you're outputting to. So if you have a 4K television, obviously use 4K. If you've got a 1080p or 720p projector, which is what mine is, then I can set it lower and make sure that the quality is as good as possible. So that really gives you some flexibility to make sure that the output looks perfect for your show. But why would you need this output? Well, if it's not obvious by now, hopefully this will seal the deal. And that is because I am very pleased to announce that in the next update of Solo Studio Pro, we will have video. Yes, video cues are finally ready and they are awesome. Um, they work unbelievably well and I am just so thrilled to have them alongside, yep, images. Damn right, we're putting images in there as well. It works so, so well, so video and images. It, and honestly, it has changed how I use Solo Studio Pro immensely. The, the wealth of, of quality and show production you can now bring without touching a button to your show is insane, honestly. Um, I can have logos fading automatically into uh, videos that play intro videos that then play my walk on music. And then all of that is just con controlled by me gesturing and my props. It's insane. So I'm really, really excited about this. Now, again, what does it look like in practice though? Well, obviously when you go to that add cue button, um, that, that enables you to obviously add in a video cue. Now, for those of you that are struggling to <laughs> struggling to imagine what it looks like, I, I made up this little thing here so you can see. And, and it's important to understand as well that this is both on iPhone and iPad. So through that HDMI output of those devices into your TV or projector, you can now mirror essentially uh, and obviously extend the display of Solo Studio Pro. So it's very exciting. But how do you add them? Sorry, I digress. You add it using the Add Q button. Um, very logically, you press that plus button, you select video, and now your camera roll will open to show all of the different videos that you can import. And that's where you'd import them from, your camera roll. 
So you can literally film a video on your phone and immediately bring that in to Solo Studio Pro. And once it's brought in, you can see that the icon here, um, there is a different icon for videos, which is, of course, the, um, the little box with the play button in it. Yeah, very similar to kind of YouTube, I guess. Um, and so instantly you can see the difference between an audio cue and a video cue. And inside the settings, well, it'll all look very familiar. And that's deliberate because I want you to be familiar with all these settings from the moment you start using these cues. There is no learning curve. There's no different menus. There's no drop downs. None of that nonsense is about making it clean, crisp, simple, and the most intuitive user interface that exists of a show control system. So as you can see, it's almost identical to audio. You've got your fade in, you've got your fade outs, you've got delays, perfect timing, loops, double tap, and auto play next cue, as well as obviously the assigning of uh, tags to that cue so that you can play it with props, objects, gestures, okay? So it's very simple. Now, as you can see, the video is in the bottom left-hand corner. You can expand that and you can watch that video back so you can check it's exactly the right video you want and obviously then apply the effects, output that through the HDMI and you get to see it on the big screen. So pretty cool indeed. And photos are pretty similar. You would click the plus uh, to add a new cue and you would select photo and once again your camera roll opens showing you all of the photos inside your camera roll. Now that camera roll obviously once you've selected the images or image depending because you can multi-select on these you would bring those in and once again you can see that the icon has changed to a little prey tile so you can easily tell the difference between uh, videos and images that are being imported obviously compared to audio cues and the settings once again look very very simple very similar you already know how to use that's what it'll do that's how it'll behave so this is really exciting because it allows us to create loops of images inside groups maybe for pre-show so now as well as having pre-show music you can have pre-show images looping as well so that's pretty exciting as well as obviously then having that lead on to intro videos automatically using obviously the next cue or just by queuing it yourself and that's the beauty of solo all of these features are tools and you can use them however you like. We're not making you, you know, use a playlist. We're not telling you this has to happen after this. You can do anything in any order at any time. And that's absolutely fundamental to the ethos of Solo because that flexibility gives you ultimate creative freedom. And so little features like this really do add the, they add the ability to add even more specialist and clever effects. And I can't wait to see what people do with these new features. So just to go over one more time, what we've revealed in this live event, number one of three, remember, it only gets better. Uh, we have 8K HDMI output, all the way from 720p to 8K. HDMI straight into your iPad, uh, and then straight into your TV, or into your projector, and you can immediately now start playing video and image cues onto that projection. We have the video cues, as mentioned, insane, absolutely amazing with fade in, fade out, cross fades between videos. It really is awesome. And all of that is handled in app with our simple UI. It's, yeah, it's mind blowing. And then images, as we've just spoken about, absolutely amazing. I, I, the things I've been able to do and the way I've been able to increase the production value of my shows using these features has been insane. Uh, and, I, and like I said, I just can't wait to see what you all do with this. So I hope you're as excited as I am. You can probably tell I'm excited um, because I'm so glad that you all get to have this in your shows now and get to use this um, and get to cue them in ways that no one's ever done before. Like no one has ever cued a video using a gesture. No one has ever cued a video by picking up a giant YouTube sign. No one has ever cued a video like that in the history of show control, but you could in your show now. Um, and that to me is what's so, so exciting. So there we are, we're one third of the way through. I hope you've loved these announcements. I hope you love the features that we're adding. And I realize this is a really top level view. It's supposed to be, because we'll be obviously putting together an incredible set of video tutorials, which will do a deep dive into these features. And they'll be available on our YouTube channel under the Solo Studio Pro playlist, obviously for tutorials. So do go and check those out once this update is rolled out. That will be announced in episode three. But that's not all. 
please join us for episode two. That will be tomorrow. Um, so for our UK friends, that's tomorrow evening. That's Wednesday, 8 p.m. GMT. Or if you are our American friends, if you're in California, that's about midday. If you're in New York, I think that's roughly 3 p.m. in the afternoon. So feel free to obviously join us for that as well or follow us on Catch Up. But thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm just going to stop talking now because I'm almost out of breath. But it has been absolutely awesome to finally tell you about these awesome things that we've been working on over the last few months. I hope you're excited. Please leave your comments below. Leave us your comments on Facebook as well. We'd really love to see them and what you think. Take care and I'll see you tomorrow.